And I'm delighted that you chose again this week to tune in and listen to God's Word. God has a special word for us today, so let's jump into His Word. But first, as always, let's pray. Most gracious and all wise God, creator of heaven and earth, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you because you are God, because you love us so much, Father. We thank you because you sent your son, Jesus, so that we can be reconciled to you. Lord, we just ask you now to change us as we hear your word. Change us from glory to glory. And Father God, as these clay lips speak forth your word, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, Father God. You're my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God has us focusing in on 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting with the focus scripture today, verse 45. Verse 45 reads, And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul, and the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. God's word for us today is, the last Adam. When he touched my heart about preaching this particular message, earlier in the week and all week long, I had no idea that I would have physical ailment in my body. But praise be to God. He is a God of grace. He is a God of truth. And he is a God of restoration. So today, know that the last Adam is the restorer of your soul. And he is the quickener of your spirit. God's word says, starting at the first verse, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Stand. Stand on the gospel that you have heard. God's word is true. And when you hear it, believe it. Verse 2 tells us, By which ye also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Believing in vain, what he's saying there is believing it just by happenstance, or believing because the crowd is believing. But believe because God has touched your heart. Don't believe just because it seems like it's the thing to do, what others are doing around you. But actually believe because it is the Word of God. Now Paul, he was writing to the church at Corinth. This is his first letter to them. And the church at Corinth, he had already preached to them. Because he had already preached to them, and they had believed they were saved. By, by being saved, then they are called Christians. And so what Paul is saying to us today, we can apply this to our own lives. When we hear the gospel, and it touches our hearts, all we have to do is believe. We don't have to do what the crowd is doing or what others are doing. We only have to believe in Jesus Christ. So let's read a little further. Verse 3, For I delivered unto you first all of all that which I also received. He, didn't, he couldn't give something that he didn't already have. How that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. According to the Scriptures, everything that you need to do is go, everything that you need is found in the Scriptures. All you have to do is go back to the Scriptures and read. And God is telling us through Paul that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day. According to the scriptures. Right there hangs our belief. Our belief is that Jesus Christ. He rose on the third day. That he was resurrected. Other people have gods. Those low G gods. Or the lowercase god. God is telling us God Almighty. He is telling us that his son Jesus Christ. He died on a cross for us. But then he rose on the third day. Other lowercase gods. Gods, they died, but they did not rise again. Jesus Christ rose again, and he's the first fruit of the resurrection. As we go over to verse 20, we find here that, But now is Christ risen from the dead, and become the first fruits of them that slept, them who are dead. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Hallelujah. So what he's saying here is that by Adam, Adam in the Garden of Eden, because of Adam, although he was in the Garden of Eden and it was perfect, God had given him everything that he needed. He just needed some fellowship with him. All he needed to do was be obedient to him. God, he already had everything set up for Adam. Before Adam was actually put in the Garden, God had given everything that he needed. 
and then he gave him Eve. But because of his own self-righteousness, if you will, he decided that he would listen to Satan. Instead of listening to God, God gives us all free will. And so with that free will, we're in the garden right now. We're in God's earth. And he has given us free will. We have the choice to choose to listen to God or the choice to listen to Satan. And so what Adam, the first man Adam did, was he listened to Satan. Then, God's word says, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. For in Adam, the first man Adam, all die. When we sin, then we're actually dying. We're dying daily. We're in this physical body and there's corruption. There's sickness. There's decay. There's disease. Everything can attack this body because we're in the physical. We're in the mortal. But because of Jesus Christ, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. That's alive in your spirit. Hallelujah. God has made us alive when we believe in Jesus Christ. We are made alive in our spirit. Not just in our physical body, because again, it's dying daily, but our spirit man, we are made alive in Jesus Christ. But then verse 23 says, but every man in his own order, in his own order. First of all, you got to believe in Jesus Christ before you can take part in this. Christ, the first fruit, afterward, they that are Christ as his, at his coming. So Jesus has promised us that he will return again. He will come back to receive us. He said he go to his father right now and that he's preparing for us a place. And then he will come back and receive us unto himself. When he receives us unto himself, we will be like him. He is a life giver. He is the first fruit of the resurrection. Remember, God has already told us in his holy word here. And we know because of first-hand accounts that Jesus Christ, he rose on the third day. On the third day, he rose. He rose. He was resurrected. And when he rose, hallelujah, he is the first fruit of the resurrection. That means he's the first He's the first of the fruit. The fruit is of that resurrection, that life, that life again. And right now, he is alive. Jesus is alive. He's not a dead Savior. He is alive. He is alive so that me and you and everyone else who believe in him can live again. Although we're living in this earth, in this physical body, again, that decays, that has sickness and disease, and that may not feel good today and may feel great tomorrow, but Jesus Christ, he is a spirit, and in his spirit, he has made us alive, and we can be forevermore with him. Hallelujah. All we have to do is, at his coming, be ready to go with him. Verse 45, and so it is written. As you see, and I'm holding the Bible for you today because I'm reading right from God's Word. And God's Word keeps telling us, as it is written, so it was written, as it was written. All you have to do is go to God's Holy Word. And everything that you need is in His Word. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. And the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Let's pause right there because this is our focus scripture for today. And so it is written, the first man Adam, the first Adam in the Garden of Eden, when God formed him out of the dust of the ground, out of the clay, out of that dirt, then God blew into his nostrils the breath of life. And when God blew that breath into him, it, it made his soul alive. That's his mind, his will, and his emotions. He was made alive. He wasn't just a clay piece of um, dirt laying there. God, he shaped him and formed him after his own image. Hallelujah. And then he gave him life. But is life in the natural. Then Jesus, hallelujah, the last Adam. There is another behind him. He is the last Adam. The first Adam was God made naturally. The second or the last Adam, God made spiritually. God the Father is the Father of both. Hallelujah. But this is the beautiful part. Jesus Christ, He is a spirit. He was, His spirit made our spirit alive. Hallelujah. Listen to 
to God's word. How be it that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. So what he is saying here through Paul is, he's saying, how can it be that the first was spiritual and then the second, why wasn't the first one spiritual and then the second one natural? God, He is so infinite. He knows everything. He's not confined by space and time or intellect. He is all knowing. He is all every. He is everything. He knew that Adam, the first Adam, the one made of dirt, would fall to Satan. He knew that. So what he did was he gave us Jesus Christ. Second. The spiritual. So the physical first and then the spiritual. My Lord, thank you, Lord. Staring up gifts and coughing and I thank you, Lord, right now that you're moving in this place. I thank you, Jesus. The first man is of the earth, which is earthy. Verse 47. The second man is the Lord from heaven. The Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. What God is saying is, those things of the earth, those things that you focus on that are earthly, that means you're following after Adam, the first man Adam, the earthly Adam, the materialistic Adam, that sin nature Adam. But when your mind... Your whole focus is on heavenly things. Jesus Christ is seated in heavenly places. And we who are His have our mind on heavenly things. Things that are eternal. Jesus is saying to us today through the Spirit, have your mind on Him. Have your mind on Him and not on earthly things, on material things. Because when it's on material things, then you're following after Satan. Mm. That sin nature will take root. That sin nature will continue to take hold. That sin nature will drive you to do those things that you said you wouldn't do. So God is saying to us today, keep our minds stayed on Him. Mm. Verse 49. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Right now, we bear... The image of the earthly. That means we're born after Adam. We have a sin nature. So we have that same, that decay in our body. That sickness and those diseases that can attack us. That mortality. That death will come. But this is the thing. He says, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. We shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Right now we bear the image of Adam. The earth man Adam. But praise be to God. We will bear the image of Jesus Christ. The last Adam. When he comes for us. We will have the same image that he has. Thank you Lord. Verse 50. Now this I say brethren. That flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed. Every last one of us will be changed. Changed in the twinkling of an eye. Let's listen to God's word. It says in verse 52, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump that sh the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Every last one of us who are in Christ will be changed. We will be changed this incorruptible. This corruptible will put on incorruption. This mortality will put on immortality. When we are in Jesus Christ and He returns for us, those who are already dead will be raised up with Him. Those who are alive and remain will be changed instantly. Those who are dead will be changed instantly. The Bible says in the twinkling of an eye. That's something that you can't measure. No one can measure a twinkling of an eye. But God, 
but God can. He can do anything. And he said we will be changed and we will be like Jesus Christ. Verse 53, for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Catch that. God keeps saying throughout this whole chapter, it's written, it's written, it's written. And whenever it's written, it's decreed, it's declared, and it will come to pass. It shall come to pass. It is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. Death is swallowed up in victory. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, he took it all for us. When Jesus Christ rose on the third day, he took death away. We have death, but that sting of death is gone. Let's listen to God's word. Verse 55 says, what? Two questions. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The grave can't hold us, hallelujah, because Jesus Christ, the first fruit of the resurrection, he rose, so we arise, hallelujah. And that sting, that sting, oh death, where is thy sting? When Jesus Christ died on the cross, he took the sting out of death because of what Adam did, the first Adam in the Garden of Eden, that's where sin came in. And then the the last Adam, or some say the second Adam, Jesus the Christ, he took the sting out of death and he took the victory out of the grave because he rose again on that third day. The third day, it's important to know that Jesus Christ rose. The knowing you're knowing, not in the intellect, but knowing the spirit man in your heart. That quickening that Jesus Christ gave you that made you alive in him. It's knowing that you know that he rose on the third day so that we can have life eternally. God is so good. Then it says, verse 56, the sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. When Adam did sin, then God, he devised the plan. He knew that Jesus Christ would come. But in the interim, he gave the law to Moses. And so the law was something that it gave you a guideline. It gave you what you needed to do to go back and get back in right standing with God. But all of those laws, they, it was almost, actually it was impossible for any man who has a sin nature, who was born after Adam, to fulfill. So God, in his infinite wisdom, he set it up for us. He let us have victory through Jesus Christ. Don't believe me? Believe his word. In verse 57 it says, But, everything that's before the but, I always tell people, it really doesn't matter. It's what comes after the but. But, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. What are we thanking God for? Because he sent his son. Verse 57 goes on to say, Which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The only way we have victory is in Jesus. In him, through him, because of him, we have victory. Last verse. Therefore, my brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. When Paul started out this letter, he said, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. What he's saying at the end of the chapter, the end of the letter is, Stand. Don't move from your faith in Jesus and the power of his resurrection. Stand fast. Now, that's for Christians. And in order to be a Christian, you have to believe. But first, you have to hear his word. So hearing God's word as it is written, 
today. Allow the Holy Spirit to touch your heart. And if He has touched your heart, I know He has, and that you have surrendered to Him, this day is your day of salvation. Accept Jesus Christ and the power of His resurrection. He is the first fruit of the resurrection. And then you can have a blessed hope that you will be resurrected also. That when you lay your head in death, as this body decays, as sickness may come, whatever the case, when you die, you can lay your head in the assurance knowing that in Christ you will live again. If you believe his word and he is touching your heart, come to him now. Come to him. The last Adam is waiting for you. The one who was born of spirit and gave you life in your spirit. Accept him today. If you do, please say this short and simple prayer with me. Dear God, I am a sinner and I realize that I am in need of a Savior. After hearing your word, I accept your Son, Jesus Christ, as my Savior, as the Lord of my life. I believe that He died on a cross for me, and on the third day, He rose again. Because of Him, I have life eternal with you. Touch my heart. Change me forever. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you said that prayer with me, and you really meant it from your heart, God heard the sincerity of it. And now you are changed. You're changed to live in this life, in your physical body. You're changed in your spirit. And then once you close your eyes in death, know this, that you will be accepted in Jesus. God bless you. God bless you.